Hey there, Mama and Papa Bears. Welcome to another Mama Bear Apologetics Podcast, a podcast where we seek to equip you to raise your kiddos to stand firm against the cultural tide. Now, we've been having a great series of all these other authors and ministries that are out there. And this one I'm particularly excited about because it's one of those books that I got to read that I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I had had this when my kiddos were smaller. And so I'm so excited for all you young parents out there because you're going to get it right out the gate. Uh, For those of you with older kiddos, this is still relevant. And so with me today, with that little brief interlude, uh, I have got Kristen Jensen with me today. The author of this book, if you are watching, is Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, uh, Porn Proofing Today's Young Kids. Again, if you've read our Mama Bear Apologetics Guide to Sexuality, we've got a whole chapter dedicated to pornography and the dangers of it. And what's so awesome about this book is this takes so much of that content and it displays it in a way that's super accessible to young kiddos. So Kristen, thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started on this awesome book, can you just share with our listeners a little bit about yourself, your ministry, and uh, even how you came to write this book? Sure, Amy. It's so good to be here with you. And I love the mama bear and the mama bears out there because we do fight for our children and uh, we are needing to fight and defend them in the uh, culture and environment that they are growing up in, which has many blessings, but also has has some dangers. Um, Oh, well, let's see a little bit about myself. Well, I'm a mom and a grandma too. I have two young grandsons and it is fun to uh, be able to interact with them. They live in our same town. So that's wonderful. I didn't see this book that I wrote, these books actually that I wrote, I did not never see this coming. Mm-hmm. I had no plans to ever take on this topic. Uh, but one day I one evening, I got a call from a new friend. And she told me about her 17 year old son. He was their oldest child. And they had found that he had been sexually molesting his younger brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that isn't bad enough, he was also into pornography. Mm -hmm. And we know that pornography fuels child on child, harmful sexual behavior. So she told me about all the problems and I woke up the next morning and I just had this um, kind of compelling thought that I should go look for a a resource like that. You know, how do we warn these young kids about pornography? Because I could see they were getting access to it. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning. I went and looked. I couldn't find anything on Amazon and I couldn't find anything anywhere. And this was mm. back in oh, 2011. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 11 years ago. Um, so I started writing Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. It took three years to write it. We tested it and tested it. And I got a lot of feedback uh, from moms and dads. And then it was published in 2014. And it's been a bestseller ever since then, you know, on Amazon. So I'm just so grateful that it is impacting hundreds and hundreds of thousands of families um, worldwide. It's, it's in like 10 or 12 or 13 languages. I'm losing count. Um, So that's my story. That's how I got here was not something I had planned on, but I think that happens to a lot of us, right? (laughs) That's like the definition of ministry, isn't it? It's like, I didn't plan on it, but God was like, here you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that is, uh, it, it, it's so surprising because you, you want to think that, okay, my, my younger ones, my kiddos are going to be protected and okay, but they're, it's so, um, saturated within culture that gosh, when we were doing research and I know you, you probably said the exact same thing in your research. I mean, the, the low ball average is eight years old for pornography exposure. I mean, we're talking first going into second grade and these kids have already seen it. And that's just, it, it's probably even lower and it's, it's so tragic. Yeah. It, it is really hard to get some kind of an average, mm. but we know it's out there and there are no iron gates on the internet. So, you know, when a child, a curious child, and the thing is, is so many kids have these devices at school. So even if you could lock down everything, your child needs an internal filter that will go with them wherever they are, 
wherever they go and when in whatever situation they find themselves in um, so that they know how to reject pornography wherever they are. And, you know, I can in, in our, um, so you mentioned my ministry, my cause, my, you know, organization is defend young minds Mm -hmm. and we want Mm -hmm. to defend them. Uh, We want to give them self-defense skills, right? Mm -hmm. Digital defense skills. So that's why we call it defend young minds. And we have a lot of things for parents, free guides and articles. And, and we, we work tirelessly Mm -hmm. to answer questions from our audience and to provide the kind of digital mentoring that, you know, so many parents are looking for. Anyway, that's, I don't know. It's, it's, um, we need to not be afraid though. I guess that's, you know, one thing I want to say, we, we need to not be afraid. We can do this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's one thing that I've encountered with talking to moms and everything. There's always this initial hesitancy to broach these questions because one thing I hear all the time is, oh, I don't want my child to lose their innocence. And it's one of those things where we as parents, we need to have a reality check to where we're on the wrong side of heaven to be wanting to preserve their innocence because the world is actively hoping that you have this mentality. So that way they have a better stronghold in getting to your kiddos. And one of the reasons it's so important for us to start these conversations is because there's a, I don't know if you saw it, there was a... um, it was like a special done by Lisa Ling. I want to say it was called Porn Ed to where they were having these, these camps that people, it's basically like recovery centers that people were going to for pornography addiction. And so many of the people there were 15, 16 years old. I mean, it was so tragic hearing their stories about how uh, they got exposed to it early and there wasn't this conversation that was happening. There weren't um, blocks put in. There wasn't this internal filter that you talk about cultivating this internal defense, which I love and we are all about at Mama Bear. Um, and so unfortunately, these kids were just lured off essentially into, into sexual slavery. And so it's it's so important to have these conversations and to have that parental boldness, which is why I love these books, because these books help encourage that. Yeah. So one of the big things that I noticed about uh, your book that I love is the chapters are just these wonderful little stories from the kids perspective, which you don't see. Uh, very often, which I, I think is great because when we're reading it to our kiddos, they're hearing it as if it's like a friend telling the story. You've got discussion questions in there and um, and you really encourage throughout this that you know kiddos need to be warned about the dangers of pornography as soon as they get access to the internet. And so, I mean, that these conversations are having to start at pretty young ages. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I wrote the original book for kids seven to 11, but it wasn't long before I had parents, both moms and dads, asking me to write one for preschoolers. And I remember (laughs) I was at a speaking event and a young mom came up to me and said, do you have anything for preschoolers? And I I felt like she'd like, you know, punch me in the gut because it it just took my breath away. And I'm like, three-year-olds? Yeah. (laughs) And yet I looked around and I realized, Every three-year-old is on an iPad, it seems like, or some kind of tablet. And so, yes, as soon as kids get old enough to walk, we we warn them about not running out into the street, Mm -hmm. right? Got to hold mom's hand or dad's hand. And it's the same with, you know, the internet superhighway. We need to warn children about the dangers in a gentle, age-appropriate way. And so that's why I wrote Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Junior, which is a much simplified version. Yeah. And it's, thank you. It's um, just so easy for kids to understand. And then as they get a little older, you can read them the good pictures, bad pictures, porn proofing today's young kids, which has that thinking brain, feeling brain, some of the brain science, but explained in really easy terms and those discussion questions. And even in the junior book, we put little questions in the, on the sticky notes yeah. in the illustration so that you can have a conversation. That is what the books are trying to do. Not only teach your kids, but begin these conversations in a really easy way. So, and if you read reviews on Amazon, it's a lot. Everyone says that it's like so comfortable yeah. uh, to get into these conversations. And so that's, we know parents are hesitant. We know they are. And so this is, you know, at least my contribution to helping parents 
uh, begin these very protective and defensive conversations at a young enough age to really make a difference. Yeah. Now, one thing that you that you probably encounter quite a bit is this hesitancy based around parents are worried that if they introduce it and they, they start talking about pornography, that kids are going to start being curious and going to look up what these pictures are that mom and dad are warning them not to look at. Have you seen that to be true or what are the benefits of this early uh, approach to these tough discussions? Well, I will first say that that fear is understandable. Totally get it. And as parents, we often blame ourselves for everything, especially moms. I think um, we 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 have a guilt, you know, a lot of guilt if our kids do anything, you know, if they misbehave or whatever. This is the thing. That first approach, which I call the cross your fingers approach, right? <laughs> I hope I won't say anything. And I hope they don't see anything. Yeah. And this doesn't come up until I'm ready to talk to them at age 14, you know, right. and that that's like, so we've been trying that we, we think about, let's just call this an experiment, right? Mm-hmm. That way has been tested. And how is it working out? Really it is not. <laughs> no, it's really bad. Mm-hmm. So what is the alternative? The alternative is now, wouldn't it be nice if we could completely shelter our kids, put them in a bubble, you know, and they never get any exposure at all. Well, we can't do that. That's not realistic. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not even um, desired because the thing about it is that we want to preserve our kids' innocence. Mm -hmm. But the, the ironic thing is the best way to preserve our kids' innocence is to tell them about the danger. Yeah. To give them a uh, a definition, right, of pornography, what it is, so they can recognize it, warn them so they know why it's dangerous, and then give them a plan. So a definition, a warning, and a plan, and that's what's in both of the books. Um, and so these kids can then help maintain their own innocence. So I believe the kids are ta- that are taught to reject pornography from the beginning are going to have a much better chance of remaining, um, uh, of making good choices. Because in the end, isn't that what we want for our kids? We know they're not going to be able to be innocent. Maybe innocence isn't the, the goal. Maybe it's, maybe the goal is that they will choose the right, choose the right, make the right choices when, um, that are going to be healthy for them, that are going to be, good for them yeah, and see the difference between good and bad and choose the good. Right. Yeah. I think that's the higher goal that we want for our kids because eventually, you know, they will be faced with these choices and they need to know how to respond. No, absolutely. I love that is our goal as parents shouldn't be innocence, but really what came to mind is our goal is to nurture self-control and anyone who has ever tried to restrict themselves, whether like for me, like sugar, uh, you know, that takes practice and stewardship and it's rough. And so, but these spiritual, uh, these fruits of the spirit that we are to cultivate, not just in ourselves, but help nurture within our children takes diligence. It takes intentionality. And that's what these, these books are about having these conversations. It's about about producing kids who have that self-control, who have that faithfulness, who pursue what is good. I mean, Philippians 4, 8, to meditate on all that is true, lovely, and beautiful. They have to be taught what it is, what is true, what is lovely, what is beautiful, and to seek after those things, which I love. You you mentioned a three-part process. You said uh, define, warn, and a plan, which, you know, mom of apologetics were all about definitions of terms because so often, especially within secular culture, words are stolen or they're manipulated manipulated in a way to where our kiddos now can, all these sins can creep in because we've just altered the definition. And then the warning is important too, because it's not a just don't do it approach. It's look, here is why it's dangerous, which is what I love about um, the one for the older kiddos uh, is because it really goes into good detail that's accessible at their age level of why pornography is dangerous, how it actually hijacks and rewires the brain and hinders healthy sexual development, which, you know, most kids, especially as they're getting up into the teenage years, as much as we moms hate to uh, hate to face this reality is 
you know, they want to understand sexuality. They know that it's good, but we need to teach them in what context is it good? Because the world is saying any forum, all forum with whomever, it's so important to have those warnings in there backed up through science, which we can see. And then a plan too, which is the practical. I'm, I'm all about the practical. Pretty is for the purse, pra- or excuse me, pretty is for Pinterest. Practical goes in the purse to where we, you incorporate some great tips in here on, okay, what do we do when we see these pictures? Uh, how do we respond? And you nurture this wonderful relationship between the kiddo and the parents, because so often kiddos are nervous to talk to mom and dad about these. Um, but this book is great because it, it nurtures that relationship that is so needed. Yeah. And the relationship is key to all of this. Yeah. Uh, We need to preserve that relationship to, uh, to strengthen that relationship, that warm bond with our children. And we will then have more influence on them when it comes to pornography. Yeah. And you said so many things that I I had all these thoughts. (laughs) No, 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 no. It's good. It's good. I think that, um, that parents who are hesitant uh, to address this, there are these tools to help you. But once you get started, uh, you will feel like this burden come off of your shoulders. And yeah. not only will you unburden yourself, but you'll unburden your child because now they have someone to talk about this with. And and a child that sees pornography and no one has forewarned them, they honestly don't know what to do with it. Right. They're they're not going to just go and say, "Mom." I think I saw a naked person and they were doing something with some other person, you know, that's not their first inclination. Their first Mm -hmm. inclination is probably shame. And uh uh-oh, if I tell anybody I'm going to get in trouble, my electronics will be taken away. I won't be able to play with this friend anymore. Who Mm -hmm. knows what I might, my, my mom might embarrass me. I don't know what, but if we open up that conversation at the beginning and we do it in a calm way, then they will know that they can come to us. One of my favorite stories, uh, I actually saw a mom post this on Facebook. uh, And she said that she had read good pictures, bad pictures to her Mm -hmm. nine-year-old. A few days later, we went to school and a boy, another boy in his class came up, you know, with a cell phone and said, hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. Well, what he saw was pornography. He recognized it. Yeah. So then he knew exactly what to do. And he turned away and he went home. When he went home, he told his mom and he said, I was scared, but I knew what to do. Yeah. I mean, just, I was scared, but I knew what to do. And our kids might feel scared when they see pornography. They might just depending on what it is, right? What kind it is, but we can give them the gift Mm -hmm. of mentoring and Hey, you come to me and ask me any question you want. I will be there for you. I will be there for you and I will push through my own discomforts hmm. for you. Yeah. You know, that takes a lot of love. And uh, I'm, I'm sure every single one listening to this can muster that love for their child to push through those uncomfortable feelings and, and warn them and give them a warning that, Oh, this is what I was remembering that can, that can grow with them. Right. Yeah. Yes. So you start out very simple and then you kind of grow. And, and as they get older, you know, they need to understand your values around sex mm-hmm. and how it can be a beautiful, unifying thing within a marriage. Mm-hmm. And um, that, and you really do want your kids to have a great sex life. You do. You know? um, that's the ideal. Most of us won't say that out loud, but I mean, one day I finally thought about that. It's like, I do want my kids to have a great sex life. And so I need to prepare them so that they will. And pornography will teach the exact opposite. Absolutely. Um, It will give them the concepts that will take them away, that will, you know, harm their relationship, that will even maybe make them, there's studies that show that pornography is a a cause that um, keeps people from even getting married or wanting to get married. So it's good for us to step up those conversations as they grow older and so that kids understand how it's bad for their brain, but it's bad for the world. It, yeah. It's linked to yeah. 
sex trafficking and all these things. But as they get older, we can unfold that for them and, Mm -hmm. um, and empower them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And gosh, that's one thing that is so tragic. There is a direct correlation to any of these uh, of trafficking, whether it's child or adult uh, human trafficking, um, sexual abuse, predators. There's always that root link of heavy pornography use. It, it's always there. And it's it's tragic. And Perhaps what's, I know what's most heartbreaking is, you know, I I will look at Teen Vogue and Teen Cosmo and all these things, and they encourage kids to participate in pornography. And then you've got, you know, um, folks like uh, uh, Megan Thee Stallion and all of these, like, um, oh gosh, these WAP songs and Demi Lovato, they're encouraging kids, oh, make pornography, be sexual. And they're preaching to these kids to degrade themselves and, uh, and throw themselves into this sexual bondage. And most kids will hear that and say, oh, well, this is somebody I admire. This is an adult. This is a, a psychologist or someone within the medical profession. Obviously they're not going to steer me wrong when really that's exactly what they're doing because they have this worldly grounding. And one thing I appreciate in your books is, uh, is you make it clear that pornography can become an addiction in the same sense that people are addicted to drugs. And I, I think that puts a huge um, reality, a big truth bomb that's in there for kids because think, oh, well, it's no big thing. You know, this psychologist says, oh, this helps nurture intimacy and all this other nonsense when in reality it leads to brokenness. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at the divorce rate and why people get divorced, you're yeah. seeing that half of these divorces are because of pornography use, you know, uh, pornography addiction. So you don't want pornography being the third partner in your marriage. No, that is destructive. And, you know, when, when you see people get divorced, you don't really know why they got divorced. You may not know, but I have had so many women come up to me after I've spoken and said, you know, this is why my marriage was, you know, broke up. And so I think that, but women can also get, you know, we don't want to think that this is just a guy problem yeah, or a male problem. This is also a problem, especially now with our younger girls uh, and teen girls. They are also watching porn. Yeah. They think it's sex education, sex ed, and they want to be in the know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're just as curious about sex as boys are. But our culture basically says that that's shameful. Girls should not be, in, you know, curious about sex. but I was, I yeah. mean, when I was a kid, I was curious about it. And so that we shouldn't ever make our girls feel, you know, worse about this. They're just mm-hmm. as curious as boys. And, um, but yeah, I think that uh, it's so important again, to just get these conversations started and take them and make it kind of a normal part of your parenting conversations, just a normal part of what you talk about. Yeah. And, and they um, will thank you. They will thank you someday. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I they, believe. even if they, they feel like uncomfortable now, they will thank you. Yeah. It's totally worth the awkward, the awkwardness of that initial conversation. Cause there was just a news article that came out warning parents to warn their kiddos about uh, this thing called sextortion to where we think of, okay, well, if the kid is on social media, then they're going to be groomed and approached to send sexually explicit photos. But what they're finding is young children are being groomed by people they think are their friends on platforms like Minecraft and Roblox. So if you've got kiddo, my kids have loved Minecraft since the time it came out. Um, they ha- they love getting on there and building, but at, there is a larger social community where they can connect with people online. And it is not other eight-year-olds that are on there. It are it is adults, and they uh, they're finding that it starts out with the the groomer first sending an explicit picture that the kids often won't tell their parents about. Because again, like you mentioned, there is usually that that fear, that discomfort, that shame. And then what will end up happening is, well, I sent you a picture. It's that whole, like, I showed you mine. You have to show me yours type conversation. And then these kids um, are being exploited to include girls. They're finding that girls are also being exploited in the same way, not just from adults, but boyfriends as well. And so it's so important to have these conversations because 
sadly, mamas and papa bears out there, it's, it's going to come to your house. It's going to come to their phone if they've got one at some point. And how your kids navigate that situation is so important. Yeah. You know, these sextortion rings, which is right. Extortion for sexual photos yeah. and videos. They are very sophisticated. They'll have, they'll have one person that's very good at just initiating mm -hmm. a conversation with the kids. Then they'll have another person that begins the sharing of the photos. And then they'll have the third person that, you know, puts the screws in and basically yeah. threatens the child to send uh, photos, kinds of videos that they want. And they teach these kids through showing them pornography. They teach these kids what to do mm. and how to, how to do it. I, I testified, um, before the Washington state Senate, uh, a Senate committee uh, about how pornography has become a, a public health crisis. Yeah. And sitting next to me was, um, Lieutenant Mike Edwards, who was, the head of um, the Washington state internet crimes against children uh, at wow. the time. And he told the story, he had all kinds of statistics, which of course, oh, yeah, of one course out the rest, I'm not yeah. very good at remembering all the numbers, but the story of the eight-year-old boy who videotaped him raping, he raped a four-year-old girl mm. on camera and uploaded it to the internet. Now you cannot tell me, that that child wasn't groomed yes. to do that. Yeah. You know, these Absolutely. are bad kids. They're, but, you know, they're being taught by these friends mm -hmm. that they make and what kid doesn't want friends. So, yes, there is a lot to worry about. And I, and I have to say, all of you parents out there, I think you're amazing and you do have a tough job. It's not just in your head. You do yeah. have a tough job. And hopefully... What, our, what my goal is, is to make some parts of that a lot easier uh, for you to do. Well, and one of the ways that you are helping make that easier is this brain defense digital safety curriculum. It's a comprehensive program. So Kristen, I'm so excited. Tell us more about that. Yes. Well, we developed this for seven to 11 year olds because that's the preventative that's the preventative years. Those are the years when they are going to be getting exposed most likely to pornography. And those are the years where you want to start having these preventative conversations. So we took a lot of the information, um, not only from good pictures, bad pictures, but from other areas. So we talk about um, forming positive and good habits around technology use. So we're talking about limiting screen time. And we explain to the kids why that's so important. And we talk about the content that they watch to make sure they're controlling the content and, and make sure they are choosing good content. And also, um, you know, to have a, create a balance between using technology and, you know, in real life experiences. Then we go on to talking about how pornography, how habits are formed. We explain how habits are formed in the brain and then how pornography can become a habit and what you can do. But the, the genius I think of this program is it's video based. So it's super simple to use. It's like a plug and play and it's taught not by, not by me, <laughs> but by six positive teen role models. And we, Ooh, there's awesome. been a lot of research done that, that shows that um, kids love to learn from their older peers. Mm -hmm. So these kids tell stories and they goof off and they, you know, they joke around. And so the, the kids from seven to 11, they really love this. And they um, remember these people. They're, they're very real. We call them the brain gang. And so, yeah, you can look at, get that on our website. It's um, all digital and um, it's just really a great way because we also talk about bullying and predators and we talk about being a good digital citizen. So it's a much more comprehensive, um, you know, defense, right? Yeah. Because it, it's not just pornography that they're facing. There's a lot of other things and you want to have those good habits instilled. And so, and like I said, the content is all research-based. The methodology is all research-based. And these brain gang, the 
bringing kids, you know, the kids love them and, mm-hmm. and it's very memorable for them. So if you have a, if you have a, a group of six positive teens that are ready to teach your kids all about, you know, digital safety, that is great. But if you don't happen to have a group like that at the ready, brain defense is a good way to provide that. That's awesome. And it comes right to your computer. So whether or not you are homeschooling because of COVID concerns, homeschooling by choice, um, whatever your situation is, public school kids, whatever, it is totally accessible for all of them. And I love that you have older teens teaching it because yeah, that is, that's especially in those ages of seven to 11, eight to 12. I mean, they do, they look up to the older teen peers. So to have them being able to pour into the next generation, it's awesome because with kiddos, you know, they will often take their friend's advice uh, into more consideration faster than, say, an adult or parent. So that's such a great approach, Chris, and I appreciate that. Yeah, well, it's additive. Yeah, Yeah, it's additive. So the more people that you can get in your child's life to say, you know, the things you want them to hear as far as digital safety, the better, right? So Mm -hmm. it's good to get, and, and the more, you know, teachers and leaders at your church and, you know, all of these people that are important to your children, if it's still as a parent, so important to have these conversations, but imagine how much more credible it all is. If you have a group of teenagers saying, yeah, stay away from the porn. It's bad, you know, and this is why, and explaining all of that. And again, they have fun analogies and they kind of goof off with one another. There's a lot of humor, appropriate humor in it. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I laugh at it every time, but I'm kind of a kid. I'm kind of a kid. I'm not the most sophisticated person. So (laughs) anyway, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it was built to be a tool. We worked very hard to get this right. And we piloted it in schools and with parents and um, yeah. So brain defense, digital safety, it's kind of our gift to the world uh, and to kids. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. So mom and papa bears, just to sum up, pornography is, is unfortunately so accessible. Your kids can accidentally have it emailed to their email. You can even see sexually explicit po- uh, pictures on regular websites like Amazon, even just searching random products. You can come up with something you didn't uh, expect. A hilarious story. My son's an engineer. Uh, He loves building. So I thought, oh man, and he loves old things. So I'm like, okay, one of those vintage erector sets. Let me go and look up one of those. Though That's not what came up folks. (laughs) So just to share with you how accidental and how easy it is for this stuff to come at your kiddo. So it's important for us parents to have those first conversations. What's great about these books, which you can find links within the podcast notes. I'm going to have Kristen here also share all the fun websites where we can reach her. It's good pictures, bad pictures, porn proofing today's young kids, as well as good pictures, bad pictures, junior, which is, is great. It comes with talking points. These help you have these conversations with your kiddos. So they know they can come back to mom and dad, because again, culture is actively discipling your kiddos with the secular sexual worldview and resources like this help you lay a defense and help your children wield the armor of God in defense of their minds uh, against this cultural onslaught. So Kristen, thank you so much for your ministry, for your work. How can our parents, grandparents, youth workers, how can they learn more about uh, these products, um, the brain defense curriculum? How can they reach you? Yeah, you can go to uh, our our website, which is defendyoungminds.com. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you can always contact us through our email contact form on our website. We get lots of questions. Uh, we would love for you to subscribe because we send out one email every week uh, that either introduces a new article or um, gives a parenting challenge. Uh, for that month, um, we are really wanting to be a, a mentor and a friend to you. And we get a lot of questions from our readers that help us to then go and research and bring in experts to answer those questions. So we are actively out there um, looking at the dangers. You know, I interview experts all the time. 
and get their take on, you know, for example, I'm going to be interviewing someone around a, a neuro a neurosurgeon about virtual reality and what it does to the what it can do to the brain. All of these things are issues that parents are going to face. Yep. And so, yeah, um, find us on, on our social. Find us at our our website. We would love to have you join our community. Thank you so much, Amy, for this talk and this opportunity to share our resources with all of your listeners. It's Absolutely. been really a pleasure. Oh, likewise. This has been great. Moms and Papas, you've heard it here first. Go ahead, reach out, connect with this ministry. Um, just like uh, just like them with Mama Bear, if you are encountering a situation and you contact us with it, oftentimes this will motivate a blog or a podcast. So I love that Defending Young Minds does this as well because it's actually meeting parents where they are on the cultural front line. So Kristen, thank you again for being on our podcast, Mamas and Papas. Make sure you like and subscribe. Join our mailing list. We're going to keep you up to date on all of our newest podcasts, blog releases. And as always, we are here to help build you up. So thank you for being with us together.